If I'd made a different decision that day, I might not be here. It was a fine line between life and death. I really struggled to move forward from that, but I owed it to the friends that I'd lost, not to quit. I couldn't just give up on the dream we'd shared together of one day winning Olympic gold. I was so determined and focused during the Olympic final. At one point, though, everything I'd worked towards was in the balance. The final was really tight, but when I crossed the line and won gold by less than a second, it was unbelievable. Throughout her life, Austria's Julia Domovitz has walked a fine line. From narrowly avoiding death in one of Austria's biggest disasters to clinching Olympic gold by just milliseconds, the 30-year-old snowboarder has teetered between triumph and tragedy. Julia began snowboarding at the age of eight during a family holiday in the mountains. The sport quickly became both her and her brother's passion. They joined a snowboarding team, and each weekend they travelled two hours from their home in the lowlands of Austria to the nearest ski resort. I was always outdoors as a child, and I loved skiing and snowboarding. I knew that one day I would like to do something in winter sports. To be outdoors, surrounded by nature, and to feel that freedom as you're riding down the slopes is simply incredible. Those feelings gave me the drive to get into snowboarding as a competitive sport. I can still recall thinking, all I want to do is snowboard. However, Julia's love for the sport was severely tested when she was 15. On the 11th of November 2000, she travelled to Caprun in the west of Austria for a training camp. When we arrived, we could tell that the weather and the conditions were perfect. It was a really beautiful day and the mountain just looked so incredible. We all just wanted to get up to the top as fast as possible. My coach said to me and my brother that we should go on ahead because the rest of the team was slightly delayed. So we made our way to the entrance of the funicular railway to get the ski train up. But there were lots of people there because of a snowboarding event going on. We queued for a short while and then my brother said, why don't we just take the gondola up instead? It was a decision that ultimately saved both of their lives. We were up at the glacier, and then suddenly every lift on the mountain stood still. There had been an electrical power cut. We waited for a while, but we didn't know what was going on, so we rode down to the entrance of the gondolas. There was lots of panic and talk that something had happened. People were saying that there was a fire somewhere, but it was all just hearsay at this point. After 30 minutes or so, we went down to the Alpine Centre where the funicular train left from, and we saw the whole building up in smoke. People were fighting for their lives. Of course, we tried to get in touch with our friends, but that simply wasn't possible anymore. The fire Julia had witnessed was emanating from the three kilometer long tunnel through which the funicular ski train journeyed. The blaze was caused by a faulty electrical heater in the rear carriage of the train. Emergency services arrived at the scene to try to save those on board, but to little avail. By then, flames had engulfed the whole train and effectively trapped the passengers inside the tunnel. A 
Of the 167 people on board, only 12 broke out of the train and escaped alive. Skiing world champion Sandra Schmidt and all of Julia's snowboarding team died due to immolation or asphyxiation from the fumes. Had Julia not taken the gondola that day, she too would most likely have been caught in the disaster. At that moment, I lost so much. Obviously, I lost my friends, but somehow I also lost my faith or trust in the world. And it took ages for me to regain my confidence and come back from that. It took me a long time before I could have fun again, or before I was able to laugh again. At that moment, I just felt that snowboarding had taken so much away from me. I never wanted to do it again. The grief hit Julia hard, and her board lay unused in her room. But a number of months after that fatal disaster, she took the brave decision to pick it up and return to Caprun. I think it was exactly that decision which brought me back to life. Because in the end, it was the sport that connected us. We had so many nice memories. Of course, the experience of going back was really painful. But at the same time, it also made me stronger. It was the sport that made my body feel alive again. Julia threw herself back into training and has since gone on to clinch two silver medals at the World Championships and multiple World Cup podiums. However, as had already become customary in Yulia's life, her medals were achieved in the face of setbacks. She suffered several career-threatening injuries, one of which ruled her out of the 2010 Vancouver Winter Olympics. She subsequently turned to yoga to keep both her body and mind in shape. Julia loves to travel, venturing to the likes of San Francisco and Alaska over the past few years. She enjoys connecting with the world and finding new places to relax and practice mindfulness. In the off-season, she heads to the sunny climbs of Maui in Hawaii, where she can go kite surfing, do some yoga, and even bed down for a night on the beach. My favourite book at primary school was The Atlas, because I always found the prospect of travelling fascinating. I desperately wanted to explore as many new countries as I could. I just love to feel this connection with the world and with nature. Going for a long hike and sleeping somewhere on the beach and having very little with you. You notice the things that you don't actually need and how little you do need to be really happy. Julia has struck a good balance between competitive sport and enjoying her downtime, but she's still as determined as ever in snowboarding. She has her eyes set on the 2018 Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang, but she's hoping to step on top of the podium as Olympic champion once again. I would like to I want my career to show all the things that are possible, if you believe. What's possible if you grow up in the lowlands in eastern Austria, where most people would think you had no chance of making it in winter sports? What's possible if you have to go through some tough times and initially think that you can't move on from them? It's about having a vision and believing in it, and believing in yourself. It's about finding trust in the world, and in your destiny, and remembering to always move forward. Yeah.